Hi, in this one we're going to take a look at the Highs interface and just kind of get a general overview and a feel for it. So as we saw previously, when you first open Highs, this is what you're presented with. You get the Highs interface in the middle of your screen and there's the Highs welcome wizard or the project setup wizard. Let's make Highs full screen. So this gives us a few choices like creating projects, opening projects, browsing example projects, or opening the manual. If you don't want this to be shown the next time you start highs, just disable this checkbox. Okay, so I'm going to start actually by opening an existing project because it's a bit boring to look around the highs interface without something actually loaded up to see. I'm going to go to my documents folder and in here I have a project. Okay, so this is a project that's loaded up. This is actually a sample library I created a couple of years ago and I've just been reworking the interface recently. So the first thing I do in Highs is I go to the Project Preferences and I click this Audio and MIDI tab and I'm just going to enable my MIDI keyboard, set it to Channel 1 and just check that the audio settings are correct, in this case they are, but just go through this on your own system and just make sure those hardware settings are correct. So let's just go over the main sections of the interface. So over at the left we've got what's called the Module Tree and we'll be looking at this in a lot more detail in a future video but it basically is the backbone of our project. This is where we can add sound generators, things like synthesizers and samplers. We can add modulators, that's things like LFOs, uh, MIDI controllers and envelopes, and we can add effects like reverbs and delay, etc. So this is where we build out the majority of our project. We have three tabs here. So the next tab is the project directory. This gives us an overview of the files and folders in our project. And then we have the API browser, You'll use this when you come onto scripting, and this is basically the scripting bible. It just tells us all the commands that are available to us in the high scripting language. Now usually in high, you'll click on this triangle and you'll have this panel open up. And this panel, this is the scripting interface. So this is where you write your scripts. And whenever you see these little triangles, by the way, you can click them and it's going to close or open some panel. And you'll find these all over the high's UI. So you can just sort of explore and see what's there. There's also a lot of areas of the UI where you can expand them by clicking and dragging. And look, we even get some more little tabs up here as well. So there's a lot to explore. Now over on the right here, we have the interface designer, but as you can see on this small screen that I'm using, it's hard to see it. So what I like to do when I'm on a smaller screen is I go to the view menu and select vertical layout. And this just swaps things around. So now the script editor's down here and we have our interface designer here and I can resize the script editor. So if I'm working on my script rather than my interface, I can make that a little larger, but still see the interface. And if I just want to see the interface, I can close down the script editor altogether. Apologies for the lag in this part of the video. This isn't highs. This is my screen recording software struggling a little bit. So this is the interface designer. This is where we add controls to our UI. So we can add knobs and buttons and sliders, and we can add tables that we can click and drag on. We can add lists, pop-up menus and preset browsers and all kinds of things. So there's a lot of flexibility in the interface. And as you can see, you can give it an appearance. You can style it the way you like. Now, in the case of this particular interface, the appearance comes through scripting but you can just drop film strips in. So that's a very common technique for knobs and sliders and things is you'll drop a film strip image in and you can do that in highs very easily. And we'll be taking a look at that later in this series. But for example, if I click on one of these controls, oh, let's find, there we go. We'll go with one of these knobs down here. Over on the right hand side, we then get this property editor. And this is where we can edit various properties relating to that particular control. So we can set things like the name of it, the uh, range of the knob, so what the lowest value is or the highest value, and the film strip of course, and various other properties. You can see here that we have some color properties and these actually correlate to the colors I've used on the interface. Now, if you're working on multiple monitors, rather than shuffling things around on this interface, you might want to have certain parts of the interface appear in floating windows that you can drag and drop onto your other monitors. And the way you can add those is if you go to the view menu, and click add floating window and you can add multiple of these. You get a little pop out like this and you can just drag that over to a different monitor. And if you right click in here, you can add various components from the main highs interface. So if we add this one here, script content, and I just go to this drop down and select my interface, you can see I now have the interface in a little pop out here. 
if we just resize this. So you can see you can just drag that over to another monitor and now you've got a multi-monitor setup and you can add all kinds of panels to this. It doesn't just have to be the, uh, the interface. You can add the scripting editor or pretty much any of the panels that we've seen so far that are part of highs. You can have them in a separate window. Okay, let's close this down. So in addition to these sort of main sections, we have a few little extra pop-outs. So if we click on this piano over here, we actually get an on-screen piano, which we can click. And the further down the key you click, the higher the velocity. And the higher up, the softer the velocity. So it's nice if you're just testing things out or if you don't have a MIDI keyboard, if you're working on a laptop or something, it's nice to have this available. And the other one that's very useful is we have this set of meters. So all sorts of nice overviews for analyzing the audio and monitoring what's going on in our project. Okay, so that's it for this video. Head over to the next one and we're going to talk about project management.